Hello! Thanks for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're glad you're here. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for new videos. If you are watching on Facebook, like and share this to your wall. Be sure to visit, like, and follow our Facebook page for fun posts, upcoming events, and community connections. Want to learn more about our ministry? Visit our website, GloriaDay.com. That's Gloria-Dei.com for podcasts, events, archived worship, activities for the family, and more. Thanks for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're glad you're here.
Hi, good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Marla Rotman, and I have a couple of announcements for you. The first announcement is that Julie Stevens and Charles Ortloff are at it again, and they are bringing you a podcast, um, the podcast Looking Within, with a new series for Lent called Imagining a New Life and New Story, where they're looking at how Jesus's story changes our story and it helps us pay attention to our journey. So what they're going to be doing is following Jesus's example and seeing how his spiritual practices allows us to live a new life. I think this sounds really interesting, don't you? Well, join them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you'd like to get email reminders, of when the podcasts are premiering, go ahead and sign up on the website. The first podcast of this series is happening tomorrow, Monday, February 15th. So we hope that you can join us. I brought someone special to help me with announcements today. So take it away, Krista. Thanks, Marla. Hi, I'm Krista. This upcoming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, February 17th. And we're gonna have lots of ways to participate. So I'm going to show you the first one, which is there will be drive throughs So let's check that out. Cars can approach through the upper parking lot on 11th Avenue. The drive through will be located in the lower parking lot. Here is what will be part of the drive through Staff member will greet you with some information and the imposition of ashes will be accomplished through a safe process. All people within your vehicle will have the opportunity to extend their hand for the mark of ashes to be applied by a long cotton swab. If you desire the ashes to be applied to your forehead, we will hand you the cotton swab for you to apply to yourself. A new cotton swab will be used for every person. We also have a community art project that will capture this time in life. You will all be invited to participate by thumbprint. This process will also be utilizing safe and sanitary processes. It is going to be a real neat final product, so we are looking forward to your participation. Two worship services will be offered online for Ash Wednesday, a midday worship at 10.30 a.m. and a special oasis at 6.30 p.m. Both of these Wednesday worship times will continue throughout the season of Lent. And now back to you, Marla. I'm back. The next announcement is that I am leading a new Bible study for women. If you're 15 years old or older and you would like to study the scripture that we will be looking at during the worship service, during the sermons, then join me for what I'm calling Dwelling in the Word. All you have to do is send me an email and let me know that you're interested, and I'll let you know what time the Bible studies are happening. We have two Bible studies being offered, one during the day and one in the evening. So again, send me an email at rotman at gloria-day.com, and I can let you know which what times to expect the Bible studies to be happening. We'll be meeting over Zoom, and you can join us there. I hope that you'll join us. And Krista, what else do you have for us? Thanks so much to our amazing guest musicians for our New Orleans Jazz Sunday. What a treat. Speaking of treats, in honor of Mardi Gras, we have a beignet recipe available. Try it out. It's listed in the comments now. And whew, it's delicious. <laughs> Marla, um, your turn. Okay. So uh, another announcement that we have is that if you are around this afternoon, you might want to head on over to Samaritan Bethany. Um, where they are having a Valentine's parade for their residents. So you can join them by riding or walking around the block of the Samaritan Bethany home to help the residents enjoy Valentine's Day. All the participants will gather at Goose Egg Park at 1215 and then begin the parade at 1230. So everyone is welcome. I hope that you'll be able to make it. Krista? Oh, I'm not fully cleaned up yet, but yeah, let's go. 
All right, the well is tomorrow night, February 15th at 7 p.m. We meet via Zoom, and that is open to all women who are 21 and older. We gather for conversation, discussion, connection. It is so much fun. I laugh extra hard every time we're together. Um, so please join us. You can check out and look for the link um, by checking out our Gloria Day Facebook page and looking at the event, The Well, or you can email me at Krista M at Gloria-DEI.com and I can send you that information as well. Mala. Lastly, if you are not local, that's okay. We're just so glad that you are choosing to spend your time with us here at Gloria Day. Just hop on to any one of our events anyone, and participate in anything that we are offering. We love having you here. Um, feel free to put your name and introduce yourself in the comments and join us for our Bible studies or for our um, the well gathering or for the men's groups or anything that we're doing online. We love having you here. With that, let's return to worship. Good morning and happy Valentine's Day. I hope somewhere along the way today that you have a moment to celebrate love with those you hold close today. And also, happy Mardi Gras Sunday. Today is the last Sunday before Lent, and so we're going to celebrate with a little New Orleans jazz music. Incredible music, and we are so thankful for our musicians today and, and every Sunday. They help make this all a reality. So we're thankful for the music that they're bringing today. Love and Lent. They sit together in a strange way on this particular Sunday, don't they? But maybe when we think about it a little more, maybe it's not as strange as first meets the eye. I mean, in our lesson today, we, we are reminded that Christ is present in all of the most momentous and incredible mountaintop experiences that we have in our lives. And in the lessons of the weeks to come, as we enter into Lent, we are reminded that Christ is present in the pain and the struggle and the slog of life as well. Whether we are in Experiencing the highs or the lows or anywhere in between, Christ is there. Love is there. And today we wrap up our three-week sermon series that we're calling Gloria Day Together. Now when we use that phrase, when we say Gloria Day Together, we are saying that we are united as one, living in the example that Christ showed us, living generously and abundantly in good times and bad times and anywhere in between, that together we are conduits of love, conduits of love in all of its beautiful, rugged fierceness. We are conduits of love, not just on Valentine's Day, or on a celebration Sunday like Mardi Gras Sunday. But we are conduits of love every day. And that's not as easy as it sounds. It might actually take some practice, which is why I'm glad that we're here. I'm glad that we're here because worship is a practice. On some very basic levels, it's a practice of love. And so with that, my friends, as Gloria Day together this morning, welcome to practice and welcome to worship.
sometimes I've been wrong Well, I play with fire Burn the ones I love But I found redemption And I am very born Well, I've been to the mountain And I am very born Everybody sing by and by Friends, let us pray. Almighty God, the light of your love shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure our hearts and illumine the world with your image. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. That story of Jesus going up on the top of a mountain and taking Peter, James, and John with him and him suddenly becoming as white as snow and they saw prophets talking and they heard a voice from the clouds, the voice of God. It was must have been an amazing mountaintop experience both for Jesus and the disciples who were with him. There are both mountaintop experiences in life and times in the valley aren't there? I'm sitting in the Glory Day Sanctuary, and this very room, which of course is usually used for worship, also for me represents both mountaintop experiences and times in the valley. Our two children were baptized in this room a little over 25 years ago. Our daughter was married in this room about four years ago. And in the last decade, both of my parents' funerals were held in this room. In fact, I'm sitting on the spot right at the head of the main aisle where a casket would sit, where the table holds the cremains, which was true for my parents. Now, my parents were older when they died, so their funeral to me meant kind of a passing of the torch, um, that a mantle was being laid on the shoulders of my brother and I and our families to carry on what our parents had taught us about loving and serving the world. If you think today about those who have died in your life, maybe you can hear their voice and see their face encouraging you to to carry on, to, to of course, mourn their loss, but to go forward with joy and energy and to live life, the life that you were meant to to live, and now they're in that cloud of witnesses encouraging you, encouraging you to carry out what is yours to do in this world. Today, as both individuals and as Glory Day together, it's our time to go forward, to walk out of this challenging past year, and to go into the future with God's presence filling us, and with our hearts encouraged by each other, and by God, to love and help and serve others even more, even more than before COVID-19 showed up. As the bowl sounds, picture both the mountaintops and the valleys of your life and see how as individuals and as a congregation, and we've gone through our ups and downs as well, but see how we're always called forward, to move forward, and to lean into God's presence to do what is ours to do in this world. There is so much for us to do to love and to help others. And we're given the strength to do that as we grab God's hand and move into that future that is waiting for us as Gloria Day together. A reading from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. 
Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. As he was transfigured before them, his clothes became a dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make thee dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The sound of leather shoes scraping against the pavement as they carry a loved one to the grave. The slow wailing of a brass band setting the pace. From a very early age, Alice Marcellus III knew what grief in the city of New Orleans, he knew what grief sounded like. He said as a little boy, he used to chase after the melancholy sound of the song, just a closer walk with thee as a brass band would play it and, and people would be carrying a casket to a nearby cemetery. Then Ellis would wait until the somber dirge gave way to an upbeat rhythm. Because in a New Orleans jazz funeral, there's a, there's a shift that takes place. There's a change that happens when the casket is brought to the cemetery and lowered into the grave and the family gives its last farewell. It's called cutting the body loose. And once that happens, the weeping changes to singing and the mourning changes to dancing. As Ellis Marcellus is quoted as saying, he says, once a person is buried, you have the second line. That's the party. That's the good time. That's the celebration. He says it is the community's responsibility. It is the community's responsibility to celebrate the life of someone. So it doesn't matter whether I know the person or not, he said. I get out my umbrella. I put on my very best dancing shoes because we are going to have a good time. absolutely love it. Dancing and singing out of the cemetery, from the place of death and into life. Andrew Yan is a, is a reporter and, uh, and he writes for, for our newspapers and he wrote an article about all of this. And he said that the New Orleans jazz 
funeral is a way to respect the dead and heal the living. It's a way to respect the dead and to heal the living. Friends, today is the, is the last Sunday that we have before Lent. Around here, we've often referred to it as Mardi Gras Sunday because Chris and the band are playing uh, this New Orleans jazz music and, and we're really, really just so blessed by, by their efforts and, and thankful for them. But as we prepare for this season of Lent, this journey of Lent, it kind of feels like, kind of feels like we are in a procession of our own, doesn't it? That we are about to embark on a, on, on a walk from the church to the cemetery, because Lent, it goes for 40 days. And, and we make this walk towards the cross of Good Friday, towards the place of death, and ultimately towards a garden too, but not yet. That'll happen in a couple of days. For now, we have this story from the scriptures, the one that you heard read earlier. Earlier, And we hear it every year on this particular Sunday, and I gotta say, this is a strange one, even for the Bible, and that's saying something. There's a lot of strange stories in here, right? It is this otherworldly story called the Transfiguration. It, in, in the story, Jesus, he changes in his appearance, like his clothes start glowing. And then it gets even, it kind of goes from mysterious to kind of extra spooky because all of a sudden you have ancestors in the faith, kind of like ghosts hovering around him. There's Elijah and there's Moses. And then to take it to the next level, there is a voice booming from the clouds. It's the voice of God booming from the clouds. And when you read this, it might be, it might just be a little too bizarre, supernatural. It might even be a little off-putting to our modern sensibilities. But maybe you could think about it like this. Have you ever had a mountaintop experience? Have you ever struggled to put into words just how spectacular and amazing something was that you experienced? What it was actually like? Maybe it was falling in love. Maybe it was a dream vacation of some sort. Maybe it was the sunset at the end of the, the perfect day. Words. Words often fail to capture what that's all about. Pictures often fail to capture what that is all about. And, and if we're conscious of these moments as they're happening, sometimes we sit back and we just want these moments to last forever. We want them to stay, but they never do. You can't stay there. And, and I think that's where Peter is in this story today. He is in this kind of perfect moment. He is literally on top of a mountain. So he is having a quite literal mountaintop experience. And he wants to stay and he ends up stumbling all over his words. And we kind of, kind of feel for the guy, right? He says to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you and one for Moses and, and one for Elijah. He wants to make tents or, or build forts or something like that. Even the storyteller in the scriptures says, and I quote, he did not know what to say. <laughs> he didn't know what to say. We often want to explain what the mountaintop experience, what it's like. But somewhere along the lines, it just, along the line, it just kind of feels awkward and strange. We start saying things like, oh, I guess, I guess you just kind of had to be there. And like Peter, we, we want to stay, right? We want to stay in these amazing and breathtaking moments, but, but we can't. Sometimes the best we can do is just say thank you for the moment. Breathe it all in. Let it go and continue on our way. The divine voice in this story says, this is my son, listen to him. 
And when they do that, when they listen to him, what does Christ do? He leads them just like he leads us. He leads them on a journey and they proceed into the valley. I mean, Christ is there in all of his glory up there on the mountaintop. He's also there in the grit and the dirt and the grime of the valley. So cue up the dirge, play just a closer walk with thee, Let's head into the valley. When I think about our lives right now, in many ways, the season that we've been living through feels like this extended procession. This procession that is taking place between the mountaintops. It's happening in the valleys. We're somewhere outside of the church and not quite to the cemetery. It's the time between times where we're moving through the unknown, moving through the uncertainty from the pandemic to, to politics, from racial reckoning to social upheaval. We walk on. We've been changed. Our lives have been changed. So we walk forward with our shoes shuffling against the pavement. We give thanks for what was. We breathe in all of those lessons and all of the good stuff we've received, all of the teachings and all of the mentoring. We take, we take that all in. We celebrate it. But then there comes a point. There comes a point when we, we have to let it go. Like the New Orleans funeral, we cut the body loose, we give it back to God, and then we go forward, and we go forward with purpose, and we go forward with joy. We go forward into who and what we are becoming, and around here, we go forward as Gloria Day together. There's just, there's just something about a New Orleans jazz funeral isn't there. Again, whether it, it's what's going on for you personally or maybe for us collectively, you might find yourself in a valley right now. And if that's the case, it's okay. Don't rush through the valley. Don't hurry through the valley. Be present through this time. Lean on one another, learn from one another, rely on the community because the community is there to hold you and to lead you through this time until the dirge turns into the dance, until the shuffling turns into celebration, until the rhythm changes and you are led into a brand new day. And it is right at that point, to paraphrase Ellis Marcellus III, that it is the community's responsibility to mourn with one another, and in this case, to celebrate with one another. So get out your umbrella and put on your very best dancing shoes, because we are about to have, as Els Marcellus said, we are about to have a good time. Friends, as we take, as we take these very next steps together, as a community of faith, and we head into this season of Lent, may we walk together from this mountaintop and into the valley and towards the Easter celebration of new life that is to come. But may we do that, may we do that as one community, may we do that together, and may we at some point along the line dare to look into one another's eyes and realize that Christ has accompanied us on every step of the way.
Friends, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray today for all who are affected by the cold, for animals and humans alike. We pray, Lord, for a return soon to warmer and more favorable weather. We lift up to you today, Lord, all of our medical personnel, those who are treating those who are ill and those who are helping to get the vaccines for COVID-19 rolling out amongst the general public. Bless their work. We pray today for all of our teachers and school personnel. We pray for our students. Father, we lift up to you today our country. We pray that the United States would always be a place where truth and fairness and justice reign. We ask you, Lord, to bless some very special people today. Be with Brian Walther as he continues to recover from cancer and various complications thereof. And bless the family of Lyle Danielson as they mourn his passing. And finally, Lord, on this St. Valentine's Day, we pray for love. We pray that love would be the highest ideal amongst your people. We pray that love would always prevail. All these things, whatever else you see that we need, grant to us, O Lord, for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There's a story that I know, um, a true story, about the orphans that were left um, walking the streets after the air bomb ratings in World War I in England. And they were all rounded up and brought into orphanages. But one thing that their caretakers noticed was true about almost all of them was that they had night terrors such terrible night terrors that they couldn't sleep a wink at night because of how terrible it was. Naturally, they survived the bombings and they lost their parents and they became orphans. And of course they would have night terrors after something like that. Until one day, one of the caretakers had an idea. They decided to take a loaf of bread and give it to one of the children to sleep with. And wouldn't you know that sleeping with that loaf of bread helped that child not have night terrors? Because what that child came to understand is that they had bread for the day and that they would have bread for tomorrow. And that was what they needed to have a good night's sleep. So they started giving all the children bread to sleep with so that their night terrors would go away. That's what Jesus gives us at the Last Supper, in the Lord's Supper, bread to sleep with. Bread not for all week or for next week, but bread for today to remind us that God has provided for us in the past and God will provide for us today. And that we can count that tomorrow will be okay too. Just enough, never too much. Every day we can trust that. What are the loaves of bread that God has given you today to remind you that you are taken care of, that you are loved, that you are provided for? Let's be grateful for those today. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after he'd given thanks for it, he broke it. And he offered it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and he offered it to them saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it 
in remembrance of me. For this is the body broken for you and the blood poured out for you. When Christ's disciples asked, how should we pray? The Lord answered them saying, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. People of God, we welcome you to the table of Christ, to take the body of Christ for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are uh, worshiping with friends or family this morning, please offer the body and blood of Christ to each other saying, Christ's body broken for you and Christ's blood shed for you. If you are worshiping alone, know that you are not alone, but you receive this communion with the great table around the world of all Christians who are receiving the Lord's Supper today, including us. Enjoy your bread for today and know that you will have some tomorrow too.
Food Response, or CFR, has been serving hungry people in Rochester for years. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, people get breakfasts, lunch, and dinners for their week. And with many people losing work or they have decreased hours, the need for food has gone up in Olmsted County. And CFR has been working hard. And right now they are in need of some extra volunteers and donations to meet the needs of our community. Here's a quick message from Wendy Sem who's a Glory Day member and the CFR board president. Hi, I'm Wendy Semp. I'm a Community Food Response president. We are so excited here about everything happening and um, we've been open during the COVID. We haven't had to shut down. So we're just grateful for all the financial donations and volunteers that we have. Um, we are still in need of volunteers, especially drivers and uh, sorters. Um, we're also, if you're looking at, uh, we take financial gifts and we also, as you can see, take uh, non-perishable food items such as meats and broths and drinks and vegetables. So whatever would interest you in donating. As a Gloria Day community, we are passionate about serving housing and food insecurities in Rochester and beyond. And as Wendy said, good things are happening and there is still work to be done. See, before COVID, CFR was serving an average of 180 families every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now they are serving an average of 280 families every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. To make things run smoothly, they're in need of some extra sorting and driving volunteers. Volunteer hours vary, and for specific details, you can contact either myself at Joshua P at Gloria-DEI.com or Wendy Semp at CFRPresident at gmail.com. 
This is another one of those many moments when you see Gloria Day active in our community. And Wendy Semp, one of our members, even serves as the board president. We have so many members serving, and I just wanna say thank you to Wendy, to Christelle, Pam, Judy, Phyllis, Peter, our sustenance committee, and to everybody who donates food and financial support to CFR. This is another way we are the Church Without Walls, and I am excited to see how God leads our congregation in the coming year through working together and serving our community. Please know that your financial generosity goes a long way to share the love of Christ with our community. You can give online, mail contributions to church, or you can text to give at the number shown on the screen. Again, thank you for continuing to step up and for sharing abundantly during these uncertain times. Thank you for sharing your hearts, your prayers, and your financial donations to the ministries at Gloria Day. Our time of worship is coming to an end now, and we have so enjoyed um, gathering together with you this morning, whether you're right here in Rochester or where you're, whether you're somewhere halfway around the world. We just love being with you each Sunday. We hope you'll be back again next week, next Sunday at 9 a.m. on Facebook or YouTube. We'll look forward to that time together next Sunday. As you leave, take these words of benediction with you as we go forward today as Glory Day together and as individuals going out to, to love and serve a hurting world. Take these words with you. May the brokenness of the world around us compel us to loving kindness. May the abundance of God's grace toward us fill us with compassion and forgiveness. And may the many blessings God has bestowed upon us fuel us to live with gratitude and grace. Amen. Now go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>